everybody. Welcome to the Akistats Arena and the 2022 Derby City Classic and the All-Around Pocket Billiards Championship. Thank you. Pool's most exciting event is originating right here at Caesars Southern Indiana for the 12th year in a row and is proudly sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Simona's Cloth, and Aramith Pool Balls. We'd also like to express our thanks to our associate sponsors, Master Chalk, OBQs, and Outsville, and a great thank you to our tournament direction team from Bad Boys Billiards Productions. Lastly, before we get underway here, we want to say how much we appreciate all of our great Derby City family of fans, both here and watching around the world, you have done so much over the years to create the prestige and popularity of the Derby City Classic. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs> 370 players put up their money to try to become the one pocket champion. There are three players left. The two that will play in front of you right now, Mr. Josh Roberts has a bye to the finals. He will play the winner of this match approximately at 6 p.m. for the championship. Without any further delay, let's introduce our two semifinalists. From Moscow, Russia, he's a 2022 Arizona Open 10-ball champion, just recently made that accomplishment. And even more recently, he became the 2022 Derby City Bank Pool champion. Sponsored by QTech, by Diamond, and by Tom, please welcome Fetter Gorst. His opponent from Pontefract, Yorkshire, in the United Kingdom. Among this gentleman's accomplishments include two Super Billiards Expo One Pocket Championships. In 2017, he received our sport's highest honor with his induction into the BCA Hall of Fame. Sponsored by Predator, by Rassen, and by Tom. Please welcome Dynamite, Darren Appleton. Okay, here we go. Race to three, 60 second clock. Alternate break, cue ball fouls only. I'm gonna send it upstairs to the comm box right now to Mark Wilson and Double J. Take it away. We have high power one pocket coming up now, and justifiably, we have the best one pocket analyst ever, Jeremy Jones. If I had to pick a winner in this one, just give me the guy that wins the leg. Yeah, I think that's a smart choice. Uh, both guys, Euros, so not raised playing the game of one pocket. But talk to Fetter, and I, I gave him a little rib huh, on the one pocket. He says, yeah, I've been playing it a little longer than people think. Uh, maybe not exposed playing it, he said, but I played it here. And then when he makes those trips to different cities, he's always, uh, he said, played some one pocket with some players. So. Um, I made a comment yesterday, a mistake as far as, I think it was yesterday as far as I said Jason Shaw had won the banks. I don't know what I was thinking. It was Fetter. So Fetter in a great position already, and he can only do nothing but improve his position to get the all around. Breaking from the rail. Yeah, and we'll, we've seen this where the cue ball doesn't get up as high, and I'm trying to figure out the real way to remedy that without pulling the cue ball way out, which I kind of like on the slick table anyways, just because the corner ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now the, the ball that he's got to worry about here is the 10. So anytime you're worried about that ball, you have to figure out, is there a way I can play off of that ball mark to remove it? You know, here it looks a little funny. Maybe skim it, but boy, that's a tough shot. Can he go rail first on the 14 lightly and just let it <clears throat> cue ball drift down towards the five? Yeah, I mean, you like that. Yeah, I mean, it's touchy. I might would just go ahead and go up because uh, the way it looks, you could kick bank this ball yep. and run the cue ball one, two rails over to this opposite side pocket because the eight, nine doesn't play. Nothing on the bottom of the stack plays. There is a thin cut on the 10. Uh, that Fetter might have, but I think he's going to look at the kick bank. I really do. Not a bad play. Maybe. No, I mean, if you get the ball over threatening, I think he keeps he keeps uh, he keeps Fetter off the shot. Oh, he hit it way thin. Now the cue ball is going to get somewhat safe unless he gives up the cut on the eleven. So not what he wanted to start here. Looks like he did leave the eleven. Yeah, and I tell you, 
he may come up into the two here. And the reason why I say that is the angle he's going to be coming off of. Not hard not to come off the 12 or the 2 and slide over for the 10. So he can open the rack a little bit, right? Yeah. Now he could just shoot the 11, get around on the 5, drop for the bank on the 10, and then take a 3 nothing lead. But I think he gets aggressive here a little bit. Now we always talk about, you know, the American players, the, you know, quote-unquote one-pocket players when they play some of these top – you know, top in the world Euros, uh, they try to get into the game a little more, you know, lengthen mm -hmm. it as much as they can. I think you're going to see Darren want that same mentality against Federer. Now, this should be just straight top about medium. Yeah, see how the cue ball slid there? I thought he could have actually hit it a little lighter and probably done just as well, but he's escaped for the five. There were some gaps in those balls, which gobbles up a ton of the energy, and you can see that uh, he glanced the two. But it also, you don't see much got open there. Yeah. But if it was it, safe, and it's something favorable could have turned out, of course. Yeah, if he catches the two more full, he holds yeah. the cue ball and opens the balls more. So I think it was worth it. Is he going down for the 10 next? I think so, because yeah. you want to for sure get that 10 out of, out of the action. Well, even if – see, like, see how he played it light? Okay, that ball is going to sneak away from the pocket a little bit. You know, if you're really convinced you're making that ball mark, yeah, you can hit it firm and come two rails for the bank on, on that tw right. on that ten ball as well. You know what I mean? Make sure you're making it right. Yeah. So, Darren is going to go to the stack here. But it's not easy because he's up high. You'd have to really introduce some spin. The the weight of the cue ball is going downhill, and you need it to go back uphill. I might entertain the 10 ball bank here. Nothing yeah. goes towards uh, Fetter's pocket. I mean, he figures to make it or hang the bank. If Fetter wants to try and shoot the five and open the rack with me having a ball hanging, that wouldn't scare me so much. Uh, this this is always the problem. Yeah, this it just ain't. won't go up high. Yeah, I may have even jacked up and try to go up the table with the cue ball right there, Mark. Well, you I know. think the bank was a better deal. You I do, too. I do, so. too, to be honest with you. Bank in the ten, he was close to it, and you're gonna you're not gonna get that many shots against Gorst. That's not a bad shot. Yeah, and he wasn't gonna get a bunch of balls from it. He was just gonna get that one ten ball, but he also took away the ball that he was worried about, the ten. So that's a rule of thumb with ooh ooh. Now that's a kiss that I didn't expect, and now I didn't really look at the shot. Mm -hmm. But I didn't expect it because Gorse was shooting it. <laughs> as simple right. as that. As soon as he starts to shoot it, I don't think a kiss is going to happen. Okay, just keep it simple here unless you really like the pack. Now the 10's pretty close to dead off the 2 and vice versa for the 2 off the 10 going towards Fetter's, rack, uh, Fetter's hole. I'd like to go up table with the cue ball here if I'm moving a bunch of balls and I'm not moving the 9 and 8 and all that. Watch the 7 into the 15. There you go. And he was a little worried about that 10-2 situation, I think. Now, if you pl see a player that, that plays a little snug, you know, the in rail is really um, a good option. So you can find out how snug they really want to play. I wonder what he can do with the three, Mark. I mean, because he can go into the three, right? Mm -hmm. And he can shove the cue ball to the right a little bit and go into the pack pretty securely and maybe, maybe kind of shake him up a little bit. Yeah. That 10 doesn't back, uh, bank back up into the 2 and dislodges the cue ball. If you yeah. Just say parking the cue ball there. True that, true that. It looks to me he can almost cut the 3 with a high right ball, mm -hmm. avoiding the 10 and still get him in the stack to me. Maybe push over the 12 a little bit. You know, it's kind of a yeah. shot you have to know because, you know, you're moving a few balls there, so. Yeah, if you could hit that, if you could just make a stop with a little bit of draw and a little bit of right English there and just go ahead and go with velocity. Looks like the one would move, the two would move, and the top of the ten would move. But but that's saying a lot, and we're 25 feet away from the table, and I can't see the angle exactly where I'm at. So No. And all but that movement uh, generally does not lend to success. 
Yeah, but when the pile's there to really secure the cue ball, you have a lot more room for error on the shot than you think. Now, it's a shot you shoot really trapping somebody sometimes or, or getting out of a situation. So is he going for the five reeler here? It looks like he's queuing downward with some speed to me. Oh, three reeler. Ooh. So he's going to get the worst of that kiss, that's for sure. Could have been much worse. Yeah. I'll tell you, interesting layout here. Possibilities, that's for sure. Just shooting through it, it looks like. so. I kind of like overcutting this and going into the stack. Okay. Mark, you read my mind. And the reason why I say that is you, if you feel comfortable with the hit, you could actually go into the seven, kicking the seven over a little and plant him on the, on the stack there, the six and 15. And that's why I said there's a lot of little, little possibilities here, the way the balls lay. Yeah, if you get him in the stack, it really cuts off his maneuverability. You really don't have anything on your side, though, unless, you, like you said, you drive the seven over there some. Yeah, and that's – I think I talked to you about this before the match. Sometimes when the guys don't know the shots, you know, because of experience, right? I mean, it's, that's not a dead obvious shot, the one we were talking about. It lends towards long games sometimes because, like we talked about yesterday with Darren – even though he doesn't know all the shots all the time, he knows where he needs to get the cue ball, and that's the same for Fetter. So yeah. they'll do all they can to not give up a shot. He must have cut him off the seven here. Is that what happened? Yeah, he stuck to the 15, so. Looks like he'll get the worst of this exchange. And Federer's got to be really careful of the kick into the stack, the 6 and 15 and all that. Sit pretty nice to hold the cue ball. So, uh, like the soft kick on the 4, right? Which is mm -hmm. usually what you're going to do, and you're just going to take your medicine. Yeah. Um, Darren could be set up for a kick shot. We'll see. Put him in the bank on the 10. Maybe. I think. Ooh, moving balls. Boy, that he, was productive. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to put inside and go back to the end rail with the cue ball. Uh, he didn't want to give up that 10 we, that you were talking about. Now, he can shoot the three one rail. If he feels like he can get the dig on the cue ball, big side of the stack to go into with the cue ball on the six. Yeah, and that's why when you're moving a bunch of balls, you got to be really careful if you're fetter. Well, he he judged the slide on the bank. He knows it's not going to grab that much and totally played cue ball and <laughs> yeah. made the most of that shot. Yeah, with the three coming thick, but that's fine. Like Mark said, he's making sure the cue ball's in, in a good spot. Now, you don't want to expose the cue ball here. Just bump the eight away. Oh, he fouled. Wow. And he gave up a look on the three, so. And really a chance to run out. The one goes, the two, four, which he'll be a little high with the cue ball, mm -hmm. but a huge mistake right there. Hmm. And it's almost like when Darren does that, when he just doesn't take those extra little strokes. You yeah. notice how he got down, he just kind of like hit at it, like went at it quickly. Saw that yesterday with a couple shots. Uh, kind of, I hate to say take it for granted, but. No, very ungorsed like. <laughs> well, you never see Fito do that. Yeah. And you don't see him miss those very much. He wanted to hit the eight, so now he's got to make a decision on the one. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, that's right. That's terrifying. Yeah. Now he's looking at what he really sells out if he shoots the one. Now. Myself, if I was going to shoot it, you love to shoot it with draw, but it looks like high ball is the way to shoot it to me. It looks like if he shoots it with draw, of course he's going to bang the four over, but he'll do that with high ball also. But if he shoots it with draw, he could come off the four and kind of split the 210 and not really get a shot, I think. Mm-hmm. 
But with a high ball, he'll come off the four. He should push the two a little bit and really get a lot of movement on the four ball cross corner. Well, we, we said high power one pocket. This is high power one pocket there. Yeah, your instincts are low ball, but he's leveling out, and I think that's the best way to shoot it. Oh, he shot the combo. What a oh, sweet hit that what was. What a much better choice. Yeah, and a sweet hit. I didn't even know he could get that thin on it. And now he stayed in complete control, meaning he didn't even give up a shot if he missed. That was the beauty of that one. Yeah. If he scores this one now, it's probably going to be over. Well, I don't think there's many ifs here. I'm sure this is a, a big part. Oh, maybe. This is a big part of his advancement here in the one pocket is we see the players every year that are great nine ball players that just when they get a shot, they just don't miss, and that goes a long ways for doing well in this tournament. Because what happens is your one pocket players start to play a little tentative against guys like this. And they don't lay down the moves as well. And, and Federer, of course, takes full advantage, just like here in rack number one. And we'll see Darren pretty much broke, except for his last break last night. He broke to... The opposite pocket that Fetter just opened the match with. If you weren't here for the introductions, Josh Roberts looming in the rafters waiting on the winner here. Okay, Appleton from well inside, almost a full diamond to the inside, taking away that corner ball from popping out. Pretty and nice break. Got look how much ball. higher the cue ball is, right? Yeah, much better break. Yeah, and that's the ticket, I think. Bring it out a little more. On the slick table, you can see the ball still open nicely, but the corner ball not near as much movement towards Fetter's pocket and the cue ball much higher, which he had a real problem with yesterday in that, that right. last match of the night. Really cost him a couple games, I think. You know, Josh made a nice kick. Okay, so sliding over underneath the 4-9. He'll open the 6 on his side just a little bit. Wants to make sure he gets in back of those balls so he doesn't sell out the 12. Yeah, this is all about speed, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very delicate. <laughs> Laid it in there really good now. Yeah. Darren can't even really take a free bank at the one. He's got him on a kiss. Can't challenge Fetter from the end rail with that six ball, that's for sure. I think he's got a rollout kick behind the six here. This is I know this is super touchy, but uh, let's see. The four eight looks like it kind of plays towards Fetter's pocket. Yeah. Um, well, he'll make the four, but sure does doesn't look bad on the eight, does it? At all. Oh, so he's kicking two rails behind. The one rail maybe not not there. So speed crucial because the 12 does bank. The 12 does bank. Oh, beauty. If he cut him off the 12 right there, that was a great shot. Now the fetter is going to look at the two rail kick. And that may have been why I may have rubbed the one or I don't know. That was a tough situation. Yeah, or rubbed the four, I mean. It, it, Rubbing the four, then it was uh, easy to have the cue ball not go where you needed it to go because it was going to yeah. get too much to the end rail. You know, I rarely ever do this, right? But, I mean, I may have left him where he could see the 4-8. But then it's makeable from maybe up the table as well. This will be a pretty shot, but it's also very easy to mess this one up. Yeah, normally when you're shooting at this shot right here, it's sitting to where you want to shoot it firm, two rails firm behind it. Like, yeah. you don't want the throw to happen that much, as usually. If you're if you're kicking at this to really throw it a whole lot, that's a more dangerous shot. It needs to be lined up good. Oh, he hit it sweet. <laughs> well. He's got just a hint of an angle. He may be able to get around the six right here. I 
And that's just a little bit of experience, maybe for Darren not seeing that coming. Well, he was also in a bad spot. Terrible yeah. spot. And that's why I say I may have just, I don't know, pushed through on the one there, leaving him on the 9-6, but then he probably shoots the 8-4 anyways. Good job there getting around the six ball with close proximity. Yeah, don't think he can really use the nine to open the rack that great. Because if you get real full on it, right, which yeah. is what you need, you don't get as much speed on the cue ball off of a full hit, even if you put a bunch of top. Very hard to dislodge those balls and open them up. He's going to try, though. See, now he's got a lot of angle. Now, the one thing he could do here is he could push the 14 over one rail maybe. I think if he follows his ball with a lot of English trying to open the, the rack, he could trap himself, Mark. He's going to push the 14 and five over maybe. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult to open the rack. What do you see? He's looking at billiarding off the top of the 14 there. I kind of like that thought because that allows him to play a more controlled nine ball. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? No, absolutely. And then, and then absolutely. he can defend himself, where if you go rare and back in there and get yourself trapped and open everything up. It looks like to me cutting across the top of the 14. I think he thinks that's going to push the three enough. I don't really see it happening. I mean, that's an awful thin hit on the 14 to get onto the five. But you may develop a bank on the 14. Yeah, you may get you may get the 15. You may come off thin enough to get the 15. Who knows? Yeah, or the 14 like this. Nice shot. And I think he knew he wasn't open the three. Mm -hmm. He was oh, for, yeah. Yeah, trying to get to the uh, 14 ball. And this is a prime example of what I was talking about earlier, Mark, as far as like when you do get a shot being so efficient running balls, getting so many. Right. That, that wins a lot of these tournaments. You know, it's kind of like how Shane got all these titles in the one pocket, in my opinion, just really taking advantage of his shots. He's going to get on the four. No reason not to. Uh, he caught a little thick, so he caught the one. Still not going to slow him down on the four, I don't think. Now what's the 10 lined up off the 15 look like? Because he could surely roll his ball straight on to the 13 right here and stick him. Or is the 13 connected to the two, Mark? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I mean, I think so. <laughs> well, if it's connected to the two also, you don't shoot that shot because the 13 will come out a little bit. You won't stick him on the cue ball. Now, if he's just going to play totally safe, you bank the one on your side and slide the cue ball down underneath the pile. Now he's looking, I think, maybe at that shot I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Where you uh, shoot into the five and have it send the three on his side and the five comes across. Oh, that's not terrible. And you can just pin the cue ball there, right? Yeah. Now, but that's if you I think got he's enough looking angle at the 13 it. still, maybe, though. If it's not connected to the two, it's pretty much the nuts to roll on top of it and just stick him. Oh, I see. And drift this 10 to your pocket off, yeah. the, off the 15, right? Now, if he's on the two ball with the 13, this 13 could come out a little bit. No, it was perfect. Boy. And that's the best shot playing with the lead, no doubt about it. <laughs> You've ostensibly given yourself yet another ball here with that shot. Yeah, and, the, and you wouldn't do that, say Darren had something near his pocket, right? But since he doesn't have anything near his pocket, right? He, Darren can't afford to take a foul because Fetter can just shoot straight away at the one or something like that. So, oh, that's got to go. Yeah, that was light, I thought. Not only to, to make it, but to hit to keep the line on the cue ball. Well, right. I guess he didn't give a ball. <laughs> that was just a foul zone. Yeah, three off the five maybe here, or can he just bank the 15 freely? Well, you can bank the 15, but it's not freely. It mm -hmm. doesn't appear free. <laughs> no, that's not free. You're going to open up everything. Yeah, but with a high ball, if you're going into the 11 and three and not selling out, that's fine. Because well, you, you have such a big pocket, right, on the 50. But you're going to leave a bank at the very worst. True very that, best. true that, true that. With a 5 to negative 2 lead. Uh, you don't need this shot. Yeah, uh, you know, Darren's can definitely take on any cross corner if he gets it. And when I say any, I mean any. Don't baby it. 
Hit it good. Yeah, and he just knows where everything's going as well. Okay. Well, that was a nice shot. And I guess, you know, I thought he should lag into the stack and take a foul. However, he wanted to take advantage of the big pocket. So can't fault him there. And he hit it so pure. Yeah, and he was going to have two roaming over his pocket if just in case he didn't make it. Now, Darren would have banked that two ball, that's for sure, with the score the way it is. But now it really doesn't matter. Two zeros are a score quickly. And Fetter Gorst, who won the lag. Man, now he has two breaks to win the match and get to the final. He did a lot of good things in that rack. One, he was smart about the way he opened that 14 ball and played that thin cut. And then th the follow-up shot was he got that ball over by the pocket, like you said, that Darren just tried to lag at. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, that ended up costing him the game. Those two shots won the, won the game. Yeah, and he's, you know... He so easily could have got three or four and then played safe rather than really put the pressure on from yeah. that favorable position. So yeah, Fetter's thinking clearly. And he didn't bank the four straight back. Like it was so apparent that's the shot, right? Yeah, yeah that's it, what I was going to get at, that a lot of people wouldn't even think twice and just bank the four. But he, he's going to look around. He's going to recognize, and he sure did a great job there. Now, it looks like he can get at the ten. Now, where do you go with the cue ball if you're banking the 10 into the 4? That's the problem. Do you draw back up on the 9? I mean, this is going to be – I mean, you're, you're really taking a chance there just with an open cue ball that nothing banks. And good thing for Darren, he got a little bit of a break there that nothing opened up. At, at least it appears so. Okay, I like the 6 uh, somehow. Maybe the eight, I don't know. He could chip off the three and go behind the four. I guess he can't really cut him off the four and the eight if he banks the six back into those balls, yeah, right? Right. It'd be too much. Can he bank the eight into the bottom of the six and stun the cue ball just to the you know rail behind the three four? Let the eight come around that, that four ball a little bit. It's hard for us up here without being at the table. It doesn't take much to really change the shot. But one thing we know is Gorse is thinking good. Yeah, I'll tell you. The one thing I know is the word bad doesn't really come into mind at all when it comes to this kid. I mean, there's not, you know, off. The word off doesn't really come into play. <laughs> like, He doesn't have many off days here. No, he's. Uh, so he's looking at the six off the, or the eight off the six. I think that's the shot. Just lightly stunned behind the four. The eight should wrap around the four. Oh, it went into it. So he played a little thinner and milder. Super nice shot. It was. He got a lot done with that shot. And he even controlled the cue ball nicely. Yeah, he's left the gap, though, so two into the stack. Cue ball behind the four here for Darren, just part of it. If something tickles towards the hole a little more, he can't do this. And he's let it come up again a little bit with the cue ball, so not dialed in just yet for, right. for Darren Appleton. Right. He really needed to be behind the four to cut off getting at the eight ball so he has a pretty easy escape, and he can play the eight. You know, back into the three, back into the nine here, and just drag the cue ball up by the seven. I'd like to use the three here myself. I'm like, just saying it looks so flat. Yeah, if you yeah. Cause you got the seven, you can't be too cute cutting it. No, but you can mildly play it and then go back up underneath the seven, like cut it a little bit, go the side rail, or the bottom rail, excuse me, and then to the side rail by the seven, and try and use the three a little bit to cover things up. Now, he can get at the seven. This is better. Then he can keep the 3 8 there as a problem for Darren. Sure, and a big wall as well. That's nice. That was effective. Put yeah. another ball on the side, had a chance to open up some stuff and make it real scorable. And really, Darren's a little fortunate. The last two shots, Fetter had balls going towards his pocket. With any little kiss here and there, he could have gotten one over his pocket right. or in, really. Right. I don't know. I might challenge Fetter here. I know this sounds crazy, but. I don't like the way things are going for Darren so far. I mean, 
if you felt good about the cue ball, I might bank the 13 into that 12 and swing him up table. I guess he's going to kick this ball. He can get through there and kick this ball. And that's better, actually. It's makeable, maybe. Mm -hmm. He should be able to get behind the four. Yeah, if he can kick the 12, that would be a great shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he hit it great. And powerful. And now that Fetter didn't mess with that 8-3, oh, I was going to say, Darren isn't going to have a shot. but So he's got to kind of draw the cue ball up the side rail mildly. Or, actually, that's tough because look at the 12, right? I mean, if you go up the side rail and you don't get deep enough, you could easily leave him a long railer that he can swing behind the rack with on the 12, that mm -hmm. being Darren. So Yeah, you don't want that. Touchy spot. I might come off the four right here and make the 10 and just leave him in the pocket, removing that bank. Uh, because going mm -hmm. up table with the cue ball right here is real dangerous. Yeah, you don't want him to have access to the bottom of the ball if you can stop that. Well, you can't stop there because of the four, right? Right. So, again, sometimes you have a problem ball. And the four is the problem. Well, how can I hit off the four and get done what I want to get done? Just got to take his medicine here coming up the rail here with the cue ball. Now he's gone deep enough maybe. Oof, I don't know. The 12 looks okay. But the 13 is a hard one not to shoot at in some way. Just because it maybe jiggles the three and eight. Yeah, he's right. gonna, and he's going to look at the two fives. Right. Just, even the 11, 14, 15, where is that kind of aimed? Yeah. The 12 is still not bad, though. It's a little steep, but. I think he can handle it. I think he could, too. The one thing about the 12 is you're not getting any shape. Nothing really goes. It doesn't appear with the 3-8 covering all those balls up, and he's going to hate this. Yeah. It's kind of let uh, Fedor out of the trap there. Yeah. You know, he can play, play the nine ball in some kind of way, whatever way he wants to. Okay, he's going to put some speed into the 3 8 here. Oh, and there he was trying to get that little ticky off the rail. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> That's three three shots. Now, here's yeah. that bank that he didn't guard against. Well, he's for sure got to play it this time. Yeah, and now balls are open he can get shape with. So, first real attacking opportunity here for Darren. I know it's a bank shot, but it's one he's a little favored to make, in my opinion. I disregard pocket speed here. Give this one a good chance to go. Uh, he's over twisted it. He's over twisted it, and he's probably going to have to dodge a one ball from Fetter. Fetter's going to look around for a moment, that's for sure. But Taking a look at the two and the five. Well, the eight. Sure. I mean, if you could cross the eight with some power and still hold the ball, I'll tell you one thing you could do is you can cross the eight with a little right. And go into the rail beyond the seven and then back into the stack where that 15 5 are and really probably hem him up moving balls over. Hard to pass up on this one though, huh, Mark? Yeah, Fetter hits it good too. It kind of picks up the natural uh, spin from the cut here that wants to bank it back towards his pocket if it's purely struck. Yeah, it doesn't have to be killed. I cut it way much. Really concentrating on the cue ball. And to be honest with you, I don't blame him just because there's been a few so-so shots from Darren, right? Mm -hmm. Why sell out on a shot like that? So he really wanted to make sure he got the cue ball across. Now, Darren, I would bleed the cue ball off the one, uh, crossing the one mildly and put him up in the corner here. You got, you know, you know Fetter doesn't have much on his side. Right. And, you know, when you only have one on your side and the guy can move it, that's a bit effective shot. You know, if he's got three or four on his side already, you moving one doesn't really do that much. I think Darren needs to get into more of the moving. Oh, he's kicking. Uh, speed's off again a little bit. This is going to be a little upsetting, especially if you let him see the eight. So can he pinch the Q8 across and put the cue ball underneath the 7? Like bank the 8 across yeah. on the 13 and put him underneath the 7? Or is he just I don't think so. It looks like but what he can do is bank the 8 at the 7 here yeah. and then drag up along the long rail. 
Double ticky, maybe triple ticky on the eight here. Yeah. Hits the rail, the seven, the rail, the nine, the rail, the four, and goes right on in. Could go clean off the nine as well. Now, it looks like to me he's playing. Yeah, it does look like maybe he he's can't going get underneath the, the seven. Well, huh? I like that quite well. Yeah, oh, yeah. and you get to push oh, balls over. Golly, you know? powerful. Yeah, and that's all from missing a pretty easy kick shot by Darren, right? Well, if you're taking the foul on that kick shot, you can't miss that. Yeah, and I still would have liked to have seen him rub across the one and not worry about what's down there. Uh, there was a three ball that was a little bit cuttable, and that was it. I mean, you can't even take a good foul now. Yeah. Well, he can rub it on the bottom and go back up on the seven. Doesn't even have to foul. But you know what I mean. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. He's at a big distance. Yeah, he can't get behind the four or anything <laughs> like that is what Mark means. This is not a wonderful shot to play. You're still going to have a hard time getting away with Yeah, and did he let him see the 15? Not saying he should open the cue ball up, but the 15 ain't terrible. Right. I wouldn't open the cue ball up probably myself. But. I, if he could somehow just lightly rub the seven and just pin to the nine. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like you. I don't think this is the time to open up the cue ball. Let Darren do that. Yeah, he's going to try and pinch it over and put him underneath the nine. Just a slight cut. Uh, just that speed right yeah. there. Oh, this is a bear now. It just gonna. It's like a boa constrictor's around you. Two coils right now. Yeah, I can't even figure where to go. That's what I'm saying. You everywhere, even taking. A, it's gonna be hard to take a good foul. You got a perfect speed here. Yeah, he's just going up underneath. That doesn't look like. Eh, I guess it is. Okay. Yeah, pretty good, but. You know, from the jump, it seems like Fetters had complete control here. Mm-hmm. So not not a real friendly side of the stack to get into, but with his talent, I think he probably does okay coming off the three. Mm-hmm. And just going one rail to the top of the 15. Don't mess with the bottom of the 15. You can't sell out on the top of the 15 at all. So we'll see how what he elects to do. He's doing – I think that's what he's doing, right? Coming off the top of the three mildly. Big shot here. It's got to he go. He pulls a, this off. Got to go a hair, that's for sure. And that's smart, you know, not yeah. really threatening too, too much. Yep. Ken Schumann's asking a question. I'm not sure what he's asking. Yeah, he's only on one. He did shave the nine or shave the seven prior to kicking across after he was buried on the nine ball. Well, I thought he, that was his second foul. No, he put him behind the seven and, you and, remember and when Darren he, shaved the seven and went to the rail, right? The last one, but I'm saying, remember when he lagged down here and came up? Yeah, and then, then he got pinned behind the balls, right? Right. And then... And then he went to the rail shaving the seven, Darren did, which made a legal hit. And then he had to kick across off the long rail, uh, which put him on one foul. No, I didn't mean three consecutive. What I was saying, he's, he owes two balls. He had a ball. That's oh, why the 10's okay. on the spot. Okay. Yeah, remember the ball he kicked earlier and he hung it? And we were one, you know, but the 8-3 was tied up. Remember he kicked between the balls and yeah. hung the 10? Yeah. And Fetter, we were trying to figure out if he would slide up the rail off the 10 or if he would do something else. Okay, keeping it real simple here. Hmm. I don't know. Well, yeah, I kind of like leaving the 9 and 13 there. I don't think you need to get into the stack. I'd rather see him go off the 5 and get back over there. But maybe this is easier to produce. Yeah. Okay. Great shot. And Darren really wants something he can do on the 10. Right. Just to start to get something over. It does bank to his hole. I mean, it does th throw right in, cutting it, you know, a little bit between the 8-7. It does 100% go. Hard to shoot at. And especially with that little cut, you're putting the wrong spin, but you're going to go soft speed. Yeah. Yeah. I 
Don't know if he left him the 15 to come off of and get back into the pack. That looks a little touchy. Now he can shoot through on the 12 and use the 10 as a big eclipse, you know, at, at the ball's nearest pocket if he lays the cue ball down a little short of the mi middle diamond there on the long rail. This 15 now, there's not a big stack to come back into again, so I would be very careful and cautious before I open the 15 myself. Now he wants to feather it to the end rail and come back in. I don't think he's going to bank it up above. And the only is he going on? Oh, he's going on the nine. Excuse me. Oh no, he's coming back on the stack. So great control. Wow. Okay. Really nice. <laughs> the boa constrictor is not loosening its grip. Well, he was a boa yesterday against Grab, you said. So yeah. I don't think he's going to forget that. No, I just mean he's never once. Uh, Darren can't get any air. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you give him a little air early. These great players. Uh-oh. That looks like it's going to hit that ball. Didn't cost him. Now we'll see. I mean, I think I still go behind the stack here. Only reason being is, you know, if you don't get him froze on the 15, Darren's going to be able to go off the seven and effectively get you behind the four. Yeah. So I yeah. think I probably, this if I don't feel comfortable getting in the stack, I'd take a foul into the stack here uh, if I'm fetter. That's the best shot. And I think he can play that comfortably. Yeah, Try, he's trying should. to be, trying to make a legal hit here and get to the stack is really tough. Yeah, and you're moving balls away again. Right. Remember, that's why opponents put you near and don't fear you putting in the stack so much because most of the time players are clipping balls away from their own pocket when they right. do so. Now he's looking at overcutting the 13 bank and going to the side rail with the cue ball, maybe, or is he just kicking the? Does this makeable? Is this four makeable? Because he's queuing up like he's putting a little speed. Oh, he went for it. And, and sold out a bank. And yeah. Yeah. I'd rather take a foul there. I guess it's easy to say in hindsight, but that, w that was always going to be tough. Well, it was definitely off of his game plan or what he's been doing as well, which uh, for some reason, it, it, as much as something lays well, when you get off your game plan a little bit, it sure seems to not work out sometimes. But Okay, I think Darren's got to pay attention to this first kind of so-so long shot. Things haven't gone his way. I see it a lot where players make a nice shot right here and just can fumble on this 10 ball. So a little extra time here if I was Darren. Ooh, shook it home. Yeah, and he hit it heavy into the pocket so the cue ball didn't drift over for the 12. I think he was really thinking of the 12 next. Yeah, he's just going to clear the 4, it looks like, but this could be kind of so-so, the 15. Now, he's going to have a ball spot, but the 15, he stuck him nice, but the 15 <laughs> it looks sure, sure looked pretty good going towards Fetter's pocket. He absolutely stuck the cue ball, though, so that's going to help Darren a ton. Boy, he had to do some wiggling to get out of there, but I think uh, Fetter helped him with that kick shot. 100%. Now, can he get at the 8? I'm wondering. If he can get at the 8, he can, there's a lot of places he can disregard the 12 as not being shootable because of that mm -hmm. side pocket, right? Right. So instead of elevating here and holding behind the stack, I may go somewhere forward with the cue ball here. Looks like he's going to jack up. This ball doesn't two rail with the 13 and the 6 there. And it can double kiss off of those balls and create problems. Well, the thing about Fetter is he just never overhits the ball. You know, there's just like, like if, even if he mishit it a little bit, right, with that mm -hmm. nice stroke right there, what could you imagine going real yeah. wrong? I mean, like, like I don't right. feel like anything too bad is going to happen. Did a good job getting the cue ball on the cushion. Yeah, and Darren's got a little freedom just because nothing really banks long rail. So he can hide the cue ball somewhere and, and feel okay at least. <laughs> I don't I know. Where could he hide it? Well, I know. It's still <laughs> a little touchy. 
But he can go somewhere with it, can he? Well, this is surprising. He must really feel good about getting behind them ball. Oh, there you go. He's kicking. It's going to catch the seven. And too good, Darren Appleton. <laughs> Told you he could get it there. Yeah. Mark? That was a nice way to play it. Okay. Bank the 13. Even if you bank it, you know, a little towards the, the three and seven, that's fine. Even if you want to go towards that corner with the cue ball, uh, nothing goes. The 12's not shootable. So you're going to lag the 13 down most likely. You could you could bank it into the 1-4, but that doesn't really do much. Mm -mm. You know, you're better yeah. to bank it towards the 7 and follow with the cue ball as long as you're not going to touch the 1. Right. If you rub that 1, the scratch is a possibility, but maybe there's enough room to avoid that. And yeah. I, like, I like that shot. If you can, if you can get that 13 down by the 3 or the 7. Ish, yeah. Okay, he's... He's going, going up six, so that means he's banking the six, putting the cue ball behind them balls. He could sell out the 13 easily here. Look at this guy. What a hit. Well, when you just what hit, a hit. hit it really clean with, like, Good perfect Lord. speed. My goodness. That's a world-class shot there. Darren might be reduced to banking the 10 to save himself. Yeah, now, you know, is the seven a little in the way, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Let's see here. He can bank the 10 on to the 6 and stun the cue ball up towards the 4. The problem is when the you want the 6 a little further out from the rail. Uh, that way the 10 will continue to come across with it. When it's close like that, mm -hmm. the 10 will almost stand up like a stop shot sometime uh, because it hits the rail and the ball so fast it really doesn't get a chance to turn yeah. over with topspin, right? So. Yeah, Darren's in a real touchy spot, but boy, what a shot by Gorse. The speed and the accuracy. Yeah, and the calm stroke. That's Goodness. one thing I, I like all the American players, young, old, in the middle, top, yeah, amateurs, whatever. Just watch the calm delivery, just like when he elevated on that eight ball and drug the cue ball over behind the stack. Very, very calm delivery. Didn't and, overhead it, like you said. Yeah, yeah. and he's... You know, one thing about Fetter, he's a phenom, okay? You, you can just label that along with his hard work. Um, but also, he understands today's equipment. Today's equipment is about that kind of stroke. Of course, being aggressive, but just a calm aggressive, right? Smooth aggressive. I don't know where he goes here with the kick shot. His kicks haven't been the best so far. Guess he's just willing to that take a foul. Right again. may be perfect actually uh, he let him see the seven okay good thing he's got a ball because Federer would be banking this the seven into the 15 right there if not and he may be doing it anyways because the 15 nine from what i see way up here in the raptors goes at the six sure does and it throws at the six even better like meaning you can make the nine off the six hitting a little bit of the six half the six I'll tell you what, if he was, uh, he's he'd be better off to be able to kick at this 15 the way the rack lays with the 14, but the seven's got him cut off. It'd be a better shot, though, to shoot the kick. The seven could go that way, too. Oh, he was able to, wow. he had more of the ball than we thought. Yeah, and I think that one shot he had where he kicked at that whatever triple combination, yeah. right? Yeah. I think that was a little reminder right there. I got a real good control of everything, what's going on here. And definitely the demeanor between the two players is definitely favors Fetter right now. Mm hmm So I think that may have made him uh, – let me pull on the reins a little bit. Ten ball still does bank. <laughs> I know, but I'm yeah. just, just options. It's just <laughs> shooting for a breath of air at that point. He can soft kick at the six, can he? Yep. Yeah. Oh, don't catch the three. Okay. Oh, that helps. Now the kick on the 15-9, even though the six is gone, he mm -hmm. still plants the cue ball right there in the stack. The 14 makes it to where he can't really lose the cue ball unless he hits the complete bottom side of the 15. This is the type it's hard to pass up. Another shot, he could feather the seven and go two rails right into the 14 very easily as well or feather the three and do it. 
that this is the most productive possibility. And it's just sitting so, oh, he didn't catch the right ball, and he fouled. That might help. <laughs> Maybe the blocks the cue ball a little bit more. Yeah, we'll see. He doesn't have any, so that hurts. So. Should be the six back into the pile here and cue ball behind the three seven here. Got to get some balls on your side here, Darren. That's worth even more than just one ball. Right. Way. Well, they're all developed for Fetter and none for Darren right now. So if he could bank that six into the two. Yeah, and you don't have to crush it. Just make sure the cue ball's played real nice. Uh, he didn't get the cue ball behind him. So, for some reason, a little off with the white ball today so far for Darren Appleton. And that's kind of a big little miss with the cue ball. Okay, Fetter would love to remove the 11 somehow. He's got some double-up options, it looks like, on the side rail, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that might be the best deal there. You just go after the 8 here off the 13. Yeah, maybe the 8 slides by. I don't know. It's tight. Is he kicking at the 3 and 7? I guess. Yeah. I don't mind that either. Well, I guess he felt good enough about not giving up the 15. I don't know if he can, might kick at this, this three ball. I see, you just protect the cue ball better. Yeah, you rail first, uh, you rail first right here, you give him a look at the 11. Mm -hmm. and I, I know mm -hmm. it's a long ways up, but that's where he's gonna start to do some things to you. So I think kicking the three ball is a little better protection. It doesn't have to work out for Darren, but it should. And catches the second rail. No. So he still let him see the 11. He wanted to catch the second rail there, and the cue ball come up behind the 7 a little bit. Again, the 12 is not shootable from a lot of places. So we'll see how he wants to play it. <clears throat> he could bank the 10 over and follow his ball maybe into the stack. He could cut the 11, maybe get into the stack, both a little touchy. I'd like to see him come across this 11 if he could somehow. Go up table with the cue ball, but I don't think you're going to see that. It looks like he's trying to get into the pile. Oh, he did come across. Oh, friendly bump, but he's left that 14, and I think Darren's got to go. I mean, I just don't think there's any other choice here. We know Darren's in the mood to shoot. Well, I, th was, I think Fetter was just hit a little thick. He was trying to go three rails around behind the stack. Huge shot. The 10 should filter off those other balls towards Darren's pocket, it looks like. Watch out for the side if you put a lot of draw. I don't think there's a problem, but. Yeah. And the 211. He's going to inspect this 211 right here with a generous pocket. Now, the one thing about the 211, are you going to get shape on anything else, Mark? <laughs> you know, because the 9 right. and 7 and 5 are also toggled up, right? Well, Jumbled you, up. You don't have to, but uh, if you feel good about it, the 15 is not a bad ball to play on it. Yeah, and you want that. You'd right. rather that because that presents another ball to get shape on that you're bringing over, right? Right. So. Two real kicking? No, I think he's banking the 15. Okay, on. I like that better. Uh -oh. Mild Gorgeous. speed. Gorgeous hit. Ooh, almost got a little bump there as well. Still, hmm. you got to love that shot, though, bringing a bunch of balls over. He still has not really many worries. Makes the 14, comes up the side rail using the 10. Pretty interesting one pocket rack so far. There have been a lot of maneuvers.
Did control. Yeah, that's the problem with this guy is his execution. If you're his opponent. Yeah. Not his problem. The rest of the world's problem. And again, a little bear on Darren's side, so uh, he's looking to go really aggressive here. Um, looking at the two rail kick behind the seven off the 15, and and really he doesn't move the five much if he hits it how he wants. I think so. I don't know. I think I think he's got to really take his time here to you know trying to get out of this situation. Yeah, he didn't want to play just a passive lag it up and have to bump the seven to the rail. No, you don't <laughs> want to open that sucker. <laughs> but <laughs> so. I was just saying that anything he does going over there, that's probably the best of those options, which is still terrible. I think he can bank the three across and drop below a little bit maybe. I don't know. Uh-huh. I tough. see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, even though they're tied up, very difficult for, for Darren and – Okay, doesn't want to go all the way to the corner. That presents something on the 10. And, and again, with nothing on your side, uh, he's off on the speed again. This is going to leave a really nice shot on the 10. And again, with nothing on your side, uh, the 12 doesn't shoot from a lot of places. You know, up table, right? Right. Federer can just I think overcut the 13 yeah, here. Yeah, can he get to he, the 13? That's oh, the easily. Yeah, okay. He's got the 13 straight in the well, if it, if it goes, like, straight in, he may draw just for position on the six and try and get on out. I don't know. We'll see. He could play a one six, maybe. Go somewhere with the cue ball. But if this just goes, period, looks like he's hitting a little downward. Oh, he sold out the ten. Yeah, he hit a little thick. Sold out the 10. Now, Darren's got to make hay from here. He's got to play this with some uh, serious thought. He can't just ram around and hope. Well, he knows he has to go into them balls there, so we'll see how he wants to play it. Pretty much a genius when it comes to going into multiple balls. All that eight ball experience. Straight pull as well. Good. I think it came yeah. out really nice. The running English, you know, even though it back cut the object ball in the Federer's pocket, it got it out away from the rail. Now he's got some choices. Yeah, he's got to make a nice shot on the two to come up for the 13, or the three or 14. I don't think you shoot the three first here myself. He'd love to play the two and get in back of the 15, but I don't know that it's land right for that. So he's just going to come up for the three, try to work himself behind those balls. Well, speeds off again a little bit because he hit that thick, right? And still went too far. Yeah, unless he was trying to get to the five maybe, which I, he, I guess is okay because he can drop behind the 12. There's really no bad angle on the five, I guess. Mm, that lays nice. Now he can get behind the nine. Yeah, I'd still stay away from that. I think I'd go ahead and get the two near the spot first. Well. That's his decision, and that's <coughs> the best decision, no doubt. Yeah, and he doesn't need but two, I believe. I don't think. Let's see. Oh, no, Fetter's got one, so he needs three. Fetter's got one ball he made. Darren made for him. Two, four, six. So, so he should need three, I think. Four. Oh, G Gorse has got two. Okay. Yeah. Four is a different number here. Probably gets these two, and if he gets a chance to draw behind the nine, that's one thing, but the 15 sure does Bank. set up perfect, yeah, yeah to yeah. get on there. Yeah, make sure you get these. And one, th you know, huge game for Darren. He does break in the next game with, you know, Fetter Gorse, if they get to Hill Hill, will break then, but. You know, kind of, if he wins this, he's on serve in this short race to three. Okay, this, the natural shot here is real nice. Don't overstun too much and get elevated on the six. That is a possibility, but I think he's okay. Good hit. Yeah, yeah. held the cue ball nicely. Okay, game ball here.
Looks like a straight high ball. He's fine. Well, he's digging down on it. Must be worried about the scratch off the seven, maybe? Mm-hmm. And Daz gets on the board, and like I said, we'll break here in game number four. Two to one. Boy, he had to really battle. And we got a quick player timeout here. Appleton was trailing 2-0 and had a hard-fought game. Came up with a couple big shots. One game, but now it's his break. Moves the cue ball, almost a diamond to the inside. Takes that corner ball out of play, and that's going to be a pretty good break right there. Yeah, I don't think the 13's cuttable. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in that game three, you know, Darren hung around, dodged a few that – you know, where Fetter could be aggressive and didn't really get it down. And then just hung around for a shot and made the most of it. Okay, I think he wants to go. You know, I'm not sure what he's looking at here. Is he looking at cutting this ball? Maybe he thinks the 13 is cuttable. Well, that's the only thing I could think about when he pointed the cue down table, like where's the, the cue ball going off the 13, four rails that may go around the entire pile, four rails and then back around. This would be one heck of a cut here now. You know, when these guys get close to the ball, they all know they can be so accurate, but dang. This is like, I don't even think this is a top English cut. This is more of a center ball chop it, like chop suey here. Oh, yeah, effortlessly. Yeah, sweet and perfect speed. It looks like to hold for the off the seven to get to the 12. Wow, super nice. Hmm. Well, Feder has made some really good decisions, uh, you know, and then he supports it with good execution. Well, that's the thing about his decisions, right? I mean, they. They start with the, the security of the execution, you know, the trust in the execution, just like right here. He could roll this in and go forward to the rail and out a little bit and then bank the seven and go three rails to get behind the four two again, and he may massage the four, you know what I mean, coming yeah. off that third rail to get another shot to try and run out. I mean, I wouldn't doubt he banks this and again and goes three rails. That's, yeah, that, that's a lot. Yeah, but I mean. But what if he banks the seven into the pile. eight ball and then has the cue ball bigger to the backside of the four, that's, and that's the primary objective of the shot? Is yeah, it? no, that's great. I like that shot. Now, the seven might catch a hair of the three, but that's okay. Right. You're, you're <coughs> just playing the cue ball primarily and hoping for the other thing to turn out favorably. Now, one thing that Mark really pointed out there that is a must is go to the rail and move the four ball. That way, it gives you a better way to guard everything. It doesn't. It kind of maybe closes that bottom rail up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, to where some banks may not be available. I think that's what he's doing, Mark. I don't know if he's going to hit the cue ball into the four like we talked about. Looks like he's hitting a high ball. Okay, he's coming up on the two. Pretty good. So he gets kind of two balls from nowhere and rearranges some other others. So, all right, you, if you, you don't mind moving the two a little bit here if you can go two rails into that 15 with the cue ball nicely. You got the four there. Oh, he just kicked it. That's fine. Let him see the three, though. So not a hard escape. And you got to watch this guy cutting another ball in. I wonder what the 10-7 looks like across, across the corner. 7-10, I mean. I'm not saying you could do a whole lot with it, but it looks pretty lined up for that bank. Again, one thing, one policy and you got to learn how to do in one pocket is the object ball moves a little faster and the cue ball comes slowly into position. Yeah. So you're always hitting those much more full. And letting the cue ball, like I said, move slowly. You don't want a fast cue ball in this game. Dang. 
Okay, and he's gotten them heavy enough, very hard to clip the four and really go effectively behind something. Right. Gonna have to really spin, barely neck it. Andy, you can, yeah. You can sell out a cross corner two here if you don't get it perfect. Oh, he caught that ball, and that's exactly good call. He's giving up the two ball, and the way he's giving it up, I think offers position. Yeah, definitely can get position if he wants to hit it with a high ball. I mean. He could stiff this bank in and then bank the four next. So, choices. Yeah, and it's just going to be what Fetter feels like has the highest scoring probability. Yeah, because sometimes with the light English, you know, this ball didn't want to turn over right. as much. So, missable. Oh, he made sure he addressed it with a little more spin and speed. And I think he's got the cut on the four. Yes, he does. And unless the six is dead, it looks like it may be fairly free. I don't think he's even worried about pocketing the four. Well, maybe he is. Maybe it is a little thinner than I thought. I was thinking. Yeah, he, it's he pretty looked, thin, yeah. Okay. I was thinking he would just go right down the table and get on the five and get on the eight. And, and I think this just lays real nice. You know what I mean, Mark? Like, it sits good to play this off the ten. He feels like he's going to make it. He could bring the cue ball back to the side rail without the cue ball going up table. Well, that'll be a. He just likes it a lot, right? It's a huge shot if he makes it. All right, he just caught a little thick. He's going to slide past the uh -oh -oh. one as well. Chance for Appleton here. Huge. But. Look at the balls, the way they opened with the 10, 11, 14, 15, all that. Yeah, better. If he, if he just rubs into the one there, he's okay. But when he completely missed the one. You know, when he was shooting that, I didn't think he would ever have speed to go past the one. That's why the, the shot was so good. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I didn't know he had to run into the one to, to yeah. be effective. That's a little more dangerous with the ball just right there on the rail. And Darren's oh, in. that looks pretty good shot there. He becomes a pretty big favorite to win this game now. Even owing a ball. Four ball banks. He can slide behind the 5-7 off the four. Yeah, that's – I mean, I still think the shot from Federer was okay. I just thought it would have been a lot better if he didn't have to go into the one with the cue ball. That made things a little more dangerous. Did he get flat on this on the 14 where he can't yeah. get anywhere with the cue ball? Well, no, it's a – I think it's the 15-11 there. He's going to rub one, but he doesn't want to rub both. <clears throat> and I think it's laying in that way where he's not sure – yeah, he obviously doesn't have the angle to draw into the 8 because he can get on the 10 to open the 9-6 that way as well. Yeah. So and the way he's acting, that kind of makes me feel like, okay, he's going to shoot the 15 first. Oh, the 15 goes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice. I mean. I know. Look at it, right? Yeah, if he can make the 15, that would solve all that dilemma. And like you said, it, see, what he doesn't want to do is get one more ball. Yeah, well, that's what he doesn't yeah. want to do. And if it's pushing, if he's dead straight on the 14, can't get movement either way, he's just got to go forward for the four. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that's where we're at, like he's dead straight. You know, like now he's looking at pinching it back a little bit and cutting the 10. So that's how straight he is on the 14, I think. Now he's considering the four. I like a stun bank myself. And the reason why, Mark, mm -hmm. is don't try to get perfect to bank the four and get behind the five seven. You want it that. But you can still get up on this ten ball and you know, you yeah. can still get up on other balls, right? So Yeah. Yeah, whatever you do, you just don't make only one ball from there. I think he's gotten perfect to hold behind the five seven. Now, if possible, you want to get to the seven because if you overrun that, now you still have a possibility on the ten. But if you come short on the five, it's murder. Yeah, he wouldn't Just, mind that roll shot on the ten. That's going to push the six over. Short on the five. Or did he just get Beauty. there? He got there. Yeah. Beauty. Really beauty. I mean, he's gotten to where he can draw his bolts, you know, in a tidy position. Now here, drawn for the seven, much more touchy. 
and maybe putting a little bit more out to get on the 10, and we'll see. Maybe not, though. Maybe it's just a real light little tap. Well, Gorst has three. And there's eight on the table with Darren on one. So that means Darren has three to the positive. So he needs five still, a long ways from home. Trying to get on the cut on the 10. It's the only thing I can imagine. That's pretty light with the cue ball, so. So, very much Gorse still in this game. It's only going to be four to three in balls once he finishes this run. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, four to three in balls. He owes one, so one will come to the spot. Oh, he was trying to just get on the eight ball bank. That makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. On the last shot, he was just trying to come up for the eight. And then he can roll the eight in, of course. Play for the ten, maybe. Ooh, got a little separation on the cue ball on the 15 right there. Kind of the ball spot is going to help Darren, or? Looks like it's not going to help uh, the 15 defensively. It looks like it goes up in front of that. Well, I think the three's got the eight ball bank cut off, but. I guess we'll see here now. Yeah, he can still bank the 15. Yeah. Don't think the four plays in the Darren's hole, so he can come to, you know, the side of the stack. You know, if he needs to hit down on this ball, this bank right yeah. here, and just come over behind the eight, he's okay because nothing really plays. And he might develop a bank on the three that way as well, like one he can't pass up on. So I think Darren maybe should have gone forward with the cue ball to the end rail right there, just making sure nothing bad happens. Yeah. Because you're not protecting something by your hole. I guess maybe he was trying to bank the 11 somewhat over or on his side, though. Be hard for me to pass up on this one, though. I'll tell you that. You know, if he can cue the ball, he might be able to hit this with low outside, right? Yeah. And come two rails to the center, not giving up the 11 and getting the cut on the 8. Yeah, see where he just pointed the cue right there? That's where he's going with the cue ball. So he must be able to shoot away enough to feel comfortable making a pretty full stroke with low outside right here, really making it grab. Now, I still wouldn't lose focus on the make because you don't sell out if you make it. Oh. All right, if that goes in, see where he's playing the cue ball? Yeah. That's probably maybe getting out if he makes that one. Could be. Anyways. Darren, it's going to be four apiece, and unless something much different than I expect happened, most of these should go up table. Got to play a light glance here, or, or really feel good about controlling the four if you're going to come off the four ball. Is he kicking the eleven? No, I think he's. Playing off the four, like you suggested, just soft okay. speed for control. Yeah, and just, I think he was pretty aware the nine and the four were both going to go over and block a lot of banks. That's the problem when you open those up and you don't have anything to keep them off of bank shots. And I think now we're going down table for sure. I don't know. I mean, Darren, you know, he's probably saying to himself, man, I don't want to challenge this guy. So you're probably right. Great cue ball. Looks like the 11 does pass, so hard to bank the six here. You know, moving wise, it's hard to say who has the advantage when the balls go up table here because. Yeah. You know, moving wise, people always want to know what to do up there. There's a lot of common sense with the stuff up table. What a great cue ball there. Wow. 
Um, but you got to give a little advantage to, to Fetter when it comes to banking the ball. He's proven that with his Banks win this week. I think Darren would admit the same thing. And a great cue ball there has made things super touchy. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have to elevate on the 10 8. And he won't be able to get all the way back. You no, know, hoping that didn't go in the side. Yeah. Lucky something didn't hit the pocket. And lucky because the 10 11 tied up that he really didn't give up a long reller. So nice shot there from Darren. Doesn't get much better than this. Mm -mm. I don't know if he could maybe, you know, bank the six past the eight and just not to make, but just to send it back down and tuck the cue ball there by the nine. Leave this alone. This gets him back down table. That's a good shot. Almost, uh, didn't he leave him kind of like a bank on the six here? Yes, he did. I mean, it's hard yeah. to sell out going into the eight because you're coming in from an angle. If you hit the eight, you should go away from the four. Now, he just didn't put much enough into it, but he did have a shot. Now, you got to hit that because now does Fetter stun the ten in and drop the cue ball below the six a little bit here? You know what I mean? He's really good at these cross corners. He could he could bank the six as well. But on the slick table, maybe hard to stiff the ten in. Yeah. But on the outer tables, the ten is definitely playable. Where you could drop the stun the cue ball, you know, beyond the six for another bank if you happen to make the ten. This one here sells out the ten a bit. So. You know, you got to be pretty convinced. The one thing, you can almost take a chance at trading ball for ball here if you feel like you're going to hit it well. He's coming downward a little bit. Yeah, decide best against banking at that six. Darren with the common face. The <laughs> bottom lip comes up a little bit. That's his thinking cap. <laughs> well, he's not. I know it. I know Darren. He's not happy with his start to this match, right? I mean, maybe he's kind of let that go now, winning a game and being here involved in game number four. But uh, well, he definitely gets emotional and temperamental. We've seen that. But he's very tough-minded, got the compact stroke, <laughs> hates to lose. Just going to feather this and run the cue ball here. He's feathering the left side of the four, so he's going to put that four on. Oh, no, he played the eight. He, oh, wow. It looks like a two-railer to me and draw the cue ball kind of mildly over towards the three. Not saying you can really get it close to the hole, but mm -hmm. you can start to develop some free shots here. Don't let up. Okay, he hit it really heavy. And Darren, what it looks like to me, he's taking extra time off the ball, but then sometimes getting down and kind of just yeah. a little, you know, less strokes than normal. Just doesn't seem like he's found his good rhythm at all. Yeah. Can he can he bank the four over and and billiard the eight, of the ten towards his hole. This is close. Not saying you're banking the four right at the hole, but uh -huh. if you can, this these other balls are out of play. This shot sits real nice. I don't know if he sees it, but bank the four a little short with a little like middle left English. Kind of throw the ten a little towards your hole. I think they're both going that way. I don't think he sees it, Mark. I think he would definitely shoot it. Yeah. He's not afraid, and he's a very creative player as well. I mean, he plays it by the book, but he has that creativity. Oh, he's going to give up the nine. I 
Nice thin hit there. Much better thin than thick. Yeah, it's a odd part of the game here where either player could get the upper hand quickly if there was a mistake made. Yeah, because you get to jam them up under them balls. And that's what I was saying earlier, right? Yeah. A lot of the up table game now, it's, it's very complex when the balls are open on that side of the table from the side pocket on. Now it becomes very complex. But when they're up here on the end rail, it's really about staying away from obvious trap situations. You know, you don't have to be a genius really to get out of some of these situations when Two the balls on the are six. near the pocket or near the end rail. Nice That's hit there. That's going to turn over onto the end rail just a little bit. That that hurt a little bit for Darren, but it looks like the ten might have him. Uh, I, I think so. If he does, whew, what a shot that was! Yeah, I'm wondering where where you go from here. I think if you cross the ten and run the cue ball back up to that pile, you're going to get a kiss. Is what I feel like. Somewhere around. A little past the middle of the table, but okay, he's gonna try and pocket the ten off the six, or is he curving his cue ball? <laughs> curving, I guess. And it looks like he's curving. You get a good feel for this. You can hit it a few different ways to get it to escape. <laughs> and that's one of them. That turned out great. You're always holding your breath when you have to turn the cue ball loose like that. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. 4-4 four, four is the ball count. 2-1 to one is our game score. Yeah. Darren wants to move the six. It just doesn't see anything, any great way to do it. No reason. He's just going to bump it. Two-reeler or no? Well, that can oftentimes turn out poorly. The eight almost twists back. I mean, it's definitely shootable. I, you may be able to shoot it with a high ball, like a high right, and kill the cue ball. That, looking at yeah. this, this screen here. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, the eight looks playable. Yeah, makeable to me. The six, I don't think so much makeable. Oh, well, Darren's going to prove me wrong. Boy. Yeah, and this one's going to have to get conceded unless he takes a chance. Yeah, I don't think he wants to take a chance right here. Yeah, and he's going to have to run the ball when making it, not to give up the eight. There's a double kiss in there you could play, Mark. But the thing is, you give up one ball, it's five to four, no big deal. You fl flirt with... Yeah. Trying to do something in scratch right here. You kind of right. make the game maybe a little bit over with at six to three. Maybe if you give up two balls. Wow. Now you're running. And now I, I think Darren will probably bank the eight. I don't know. It's a little steeper than it was last time. Yeah. So maybe not. Looking at the 10. The thing is, if he doesn't get anything over to his side, of course, the 6 is on his side, but kind of bare. And if, you know, so Fetter can get just the just as much the opportunity to trap him with those balls up table some kind of way. So if he plays off the 10, there's obviously going to be movement on the cue ball coming back up table. And if he doesn't get the 10 all the way across, watch out. Fetter might send something towards his pocket. And kind of bury him. I don't see what that is just yet, but that's the problem when you back cut that ten ball to bank it on your side. The cue ball is coming off there kind of hot. Now, if you land in the clutter and it can easily get tangled up there, where you you do trap him, but you can also you can overhit this and scratch. Yeah, he's not even playing that. Yeah, he's playing triple careful here. 
I don't blame him, really, to be honest with you. I mean. Now, there was a shot earlier. Fetter kind of didn't, didn't shoot, but, I mean, it wasn't the right time. But just imagine, I'm just going to tell you this, a spectator, but say you get in the center of the table-ish, and he was earlier. See how the 11 sits on the 8. He could have banked the 3 into the 11, right? And mm -hmm. it's got to go off the 8 towards Fetter's pocket, and the 8's going to cross like that a little bit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? With yeah. a high ball, bank the 3 into the face of the 11. It's kind of a scramble shot that you can do a lot with. Is Fetter playing the 10 on I his side? I think he's just moving the 6. Oh, just moving it. Oh, getting rid of the 6 yeah. all together. He's okay. got to disrupt those now. and. I think he kind of guarded against the bank because the three made it to where the cue ball is not going to be able to get out of the way. So I think, I think if Darren banks the eleven, unless he cuts the, cuts it a lot, I think he's going to entertain a kiss. Now the three he could bank right and kill the ball. He could definitely bank the three. He's got to go for these a little more, in my opinion, instead of the light, light speed. And that's, that's a better speed, in my opinion. Got to give those a good chance to go. <laughs> now 5-4, right? Five yeah, 5-4. Five four. Big shot here. This is no hanger. And not only to get it 6-4 with the balls up table, but you can give up a return shot on this one. Well, if he misses it, he figures to miss it heavy. Yeah, but you right. don't want to roll this. You want to give it a good chance of going, right? Go up table with the cue ball. Yeah, I like that. Nice shot. Super nice stroke there. All right, I wouldn't fool with those, I don't think. Just kind of lay on the six here, I think. Yeah, keep the six out of play. Yeah. That, let's slow them down. Yeah, and you just never know what you're doing with these all the time, I don't think, is the main worry for me. If there's something super secure, but you don't want balls going on the spot from your side of the table, that being the nine or any of yeah. that, right? You don't want Fetter doing any of that stuff. So you just lay on the six here. He's going to maybe cross it over. Can he get the six into the rail enough to bank it over? Oh, he can. Nice shot. So Darren just, you know kind of getting one foot more out of the sand yeah. a little bit at a time. <laughs> yeah, uh, hanging around. Yeah, very much so. Two rail on the 11. I think he gave up a pretty easy shot here. And you don't even have to play it at the pocket. You right. know what I mean? You could just play it just past the side, let it kind of, you know, drift down a little bit, you know, fast table, just stun the cue ball, you know, behind the six if you want. Must not be able to get at it. Maybe maybe the six has got a little edge of the 11 cut off. Oh, he's banking the eight. Wow. That looks tight. Yeah. Does that? Yeah, you gotta shoot the eleven, right? Oh, he could get a lot Ooh, of it, Mark. That's a good shot. Yeah, it's a good shot, but with the lead, you really want it in front of the pocket, right? So now Fetter should try to do something with the eight, maybe the nine, maybe the four. I don't know where they're pointed exactly, but if he can do something to get a b another ball in the spot, maybe put him behind those balls. Now, one thing you can do, right, like say you had a 7-3 to three lead yeah. there instead of a 6-4. When you bank the 11 there, right, mm -hmm. you play with the open cue ball. Don't stick him behind the 6. Go ahead and go over to the other side of the table and let him move it away. And the point being is he's moving your ball away, but he's not trapping you and putting more balls on the spot from behind in the game. Does that make sense, Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you have a big lead, you do that. Now, 6-4, that's not that big of a lead. He's looking at this six ball, so I don't think Fetter wanted to give him this, but it's not the end of the world if he doesn't get it near the pocket. Oh, he hit it sweet. Wow. Good hit. Good speed. Oh, 
Okay, so Fetter needs to come with a big kick shot here. Is it too? It looks maybe, never mind. It looks too treacherous to kick behind the six. Efron put you behind that ball somehow, but <laughs> he would. From and here. Then he would start to come back in the game because of it. Wouldn't, wouldn't he uh, just remove the six here? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the safest shot. But then again, balls are going to go up table again, and he's got to kind of start over, bringing them back down. And maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself because, like I said, 6-4 is not that big of a lead. Wants to protect that ball if you can. Boy, that nice long stop shot there at soft speed. you to be hitting effective backspin there. Yeah, just 11 into the 8 here, I think, and draw straight back. If I don't know where they're going and it's kind of scary, I might give up a shot. I don't mind moving them both, even if I'm leaving the cue ball kind of near my own pocket, which is kind of abnormal. But, yeah, I like moving them both here. Yeah, just like that. Now he's hoping he just doesn't dress him up on a bank, and it doesn't appear he has. How thin is he on the six? That's what I was going to say. With the nine and four the way they are, mm -hmm. you know, if you feel confident you're not going to dive below the nine, go at the nine, banking the six, uh, you know, the si nine and four really helped the cue ball out a lot. So this may not be at the pocket. I don't know. If he does bank the six, it may just try to get it down there effectively. But if he overcuts it at all, watch out for the scratch going off the back rail, off the nine. Straight high, no inside. But I don't think he needs any. Man, how good does he hit the ball, though? I mean, golly. What a shot. Look what would have wow. happened there. <laughs> yeah, he would have been kind of unlucky to give up the four, but, man, what a hit. You can see, I can see a couple of the players' faces over there are just like, wow. Yeah, I'm trying to see. He can get at the 11. Might get out from here if he can pocket this 11 with some power, which he's going to go past the 8, and he might get a bank on the 4. You never know if he really hits it, hits it well. <laughs> Frozen to the back rail. We're going to power up. Boy, oh, boy. Yeah, he probably really doesn't power up, but he probably just kind of rolls it. The cue ball is going to get past the eight anyways. But if he does power up, it'd be sweet to watch. <laughs> yeah. He, he did. did. Power up. He was trying to get on that bank on the four, I think, or maybe shape on the eight. Ball on the spot. Now Darren's going to be super thin on the ball on the spot. He can get to the left side of the cue ball, though. And Fetter's triple hot about missing that one. Most of us would be like, eh, it's okay. Hmm. He's been pretty fortunate here to get that cue ball up on the E. Yeah, I agree, and especially because with the 15 bankable and nothing really that that close to Darren's pocket, Darren's got to be super, super safe here. And the key here is just come off the, the right side of the nine, pretty full. Kind of banking it up to where you can leave him a little bit of a shot on the on the 11, but he's not going to shoot it. So just let the nine come back up to about where the spot's at, right where it's at now. Oh, he played it firm. Nothing wrong with that. Now does Fetter shoot the 11 with top inside, get position on the eight? It does work. And that's why I want my opponent on the rail more in that spot, Mark. Yeah. You know, like come across the top of the nine, just let it float back up the middle of the table and go to the rail with the cue ball. 
top inside on this 11 is not possible from there. Okay, he's not going to shoot it. little challenge and a, a funny one there because he could have easily given up a cross corner bank. He got a little fortunate the 9-11 got jumbled up. I don't mind the challenge on the 8, that's for sure. Don't mind that not one bit. I would cut the 4 before I cut the 8 here, Mark. Myself. Hmm. I know it's thin and all, but the cue ball's out for one pocket player is that first diamond. That's a pretty good spot for it overall. Probably just banks the eight to his side. Go to the side rail and use the four to try and hide the eight. That's the, that's the you know, not too, don't fish too far from the shore kind of shot. He crossing this over lightly. Okay, coming back. Good shot. Two are going to come on the spot. A little light with the cue ball. He won. If he gets that one to the rail there, everything becomes real touchy, especially if he cuts him off the nine and the eight and gets him underneath the 11 and on the rail with the cue ball. Not much he can do with these balls on the spot here, right? No, and it's still touchy. <laughs> this is still touchy coming back. When you don't have anything on your side, you're always worried about giving up something free. So I think I go into the nine here somehow. I'm not sure how exactly. Maybe cut the nine into the eight and go to the middle of the end rail if one comes on the spot with the eight being pocketed. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So just a little high right on the nine going going to the middle of the end rail lightly, cut the nine on the eight. It's about the safest shot you have, I think. You see anything else, Mark? No. That's what I'm saying. This is one of those awkward. Those He's crossing this ball over and coming all the way back down. I think that's that's opening up a possibility of a mistake. I think you got to be the nine ball here. Oh, this is okay. This isn't terrible. Usually when you shoot a shot like that, knowing you're not going to make it, you're trying to direct your opponent a little bit is all. Yeah. Now, Fetter should come off the top of the four with left English, go to the side rail and try and kill him up behind the nine. And the reason why you should do that is so natural in this shot to do it. This is a pretty standard one-pocket shot. He's going to cut the eight, huh? Well, wow. That's what he's looking at, but my wow. goodness, it looks like a Hercule. you got to be kidding yeah. I can't even imagine cutting this eight. And you can't. I guess it's free. You know, he well, feels like if he makes that, it. But well, we'll I'm, see. Yeah. I get, well, the only thing he saw would be the eight. You would, yeah. It's a monster hit. Hard to get this one to the pocket, I think. <laughs> get it pure. What an effort. Really nice. Effort. Really nice. He would have had one more pancake for breakfast. I think he could have made that. Okay, you could do a couple things here. You can cross it. Looks like it. Just don't baby it. You kiss it when you baby it. Yeah, there you go. A little scary going up that rail, but that's what's just part of it. <laughs> the good thing is he knows he's not really selling out a straight in, right? So... I think Fedor can bank this nine. Is it double kiss? Uh, yeah, maybe double yeah. kiss. Yeah, he could beat. He could beat the kiss with like a a swerve right English, but the eight's in the way to let the cue ball escape. Like you know, I have to show it to you, but like a yeah. little level, like or, or I say a, a level masse. You know how you kind of just swerve yeah. it. And you don't really elevate the cue a whole lot, if any. I 
not sure what he's doing here. It looks like he's coming off the four ball. Wow. Is he shooting the eight into the nine, maybe? Yeah, that, eight into the nine. I like that. All right, he's got to dodge some long railers here. And it kind of got the 11 over enough to where it's real hard to shoot at for shape. Darren kind of shaking his head knows he could have got a little better shot there. Yeah. No, he could shoot the 11 and just draw back to the end rail, try and pocket one. The problem with that is he's got to hit it at a speed to where it goes back up table. And if you don't make it, well, you're not going to have anything near your pocket. Cue ball is going to be underneath these balls here right here, and he could give up a two-reeler on the 11, maybe a one-reeler on the four. Depends. Oh, he really guarded the cue ball. <laughs> he didn't want it to come <laughs> over on this side, so he hit that plenty thick. And a little unlucky, the 11 hit the point. Fred is going to take a look at this little two-railer. Well, this table sets up better for the two-railers than any in the building, in my opinion. As far as, like, when it looks like it's off, but it'll straighten out. Yeah. You know? Like right here, the good thing is that side English won't grab from this on this table. So off the second rail, even though it's coming in at what looks like a heavy angle, it'll come out kind of light. Just don't baby it. Ooh, that one really turned over, but he was playing all cue ball. He didn't want to cut the 11 much. Can't blame him there. No, he's done well. What good do you mean? Care. This, yeah, this ball care. has gotten super goofy. A lot of people say, oh, just, well, you got to bunt it, but you got to roll and bunt it nice. I think the kick shot is a little far up for me. Mm hmm. So a lot of people say, well, you just roll on this and bunt it up there. Well, yeah, that's nice. I'm just worried about the ball rolling off or maybe miss hitting it. And the other thing is you leave a three-railer on the 11 a lot of times when you bunt it up that side rail. Did really well with the kick shot. I'm glad he was a lot more confident than yeah, I was Yeah, that was about a scary it. shot yeah. for sure. Doesn't always have to turn out bad, though. No, absolutely not. All right. You just shoot the nine into the right side of the four. The four cuts towards the eight. The nine should come off one rail to your side. Just draw back to the center of the end rail. Then the 11 will be a kiss shot from there. Looks to me pretty easy. Might have to cut the nine a hair, but that's okay. They're both going to your side. And again, just look where on the rail leaves that double kiss on the 11. All right, he even pocketed that ball. Still the right shot, though. Yeah, he's got Darren in the spot here where he has to be defensive. Yeah, if he gets uh, the ball on the rail there, Darren's in a lot of spot because, mm -hmm. because that four is a hard one to defend against along with the 11. So, Darren, you know, if you're worried here, you can chop the four, right, and come down the left side of the table towards Better's pocket. Ooh, this has got to slow down. This is a horrible way to make a big mistake. Oh, my. <laughs> what was he trying to do there? He was trying to clip one of them balls off oh. the rail, I guess. Okay. Uh, but I was saying, if you're worried about the nine, you can c overcut the four with left English and come down the left side of the table towards Fetter's pocket. You're moving that four ball that you're worried about, and you should have good control. Still didn't expect this mistake, Mark. No, you really hate losing with or giving up balls when playing safe. Now, this is the dilemma. Fetter obviously shoots him straight in a little better than he banks them. We all do, but he banks awfully well. So do you settle for the four-ball bank or do you try to get behind it? I think you should settle for the four-ball bank because getting behind it 
is uh, it looks like he's going behind it. Well, it's natural. That's the one thing about the shot. It does look good. He's going behind the eight, and then shape on the four to end the match, man. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, this should look like a hanger compared yeah. to the last eight he cut from this position. <laughs> I agree with that. But I don't think he can. Can he level pace up. it? Can he, can he keep it slow enough to get behind the four? No, 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 no. He's okay. either, I think he. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he can even dig and get behind the eleven. Um, he can, but I don't think he should. Right. This ball here puts you to where you need one, and you're going to get a bank on the eleven or the four. One of them. So, very hard not to. He hit the last one so good. I think elevating the cue would be a mistake here. I think just level out. You know, you get to where you need one right here. Looks like you're going to go square into the four it, here. It me. does. It does. But that's all right. You can yeah, still play yeah, for yeah. it. Just get this by your hole if you don't make it. Yeah, I think he'll shoot it a little more pace than the last one, of course. But, oh, he hit, hit it thick. heavy. Hit it heavy. It slid nicely on it for him. Gave well, him a chance. but well, Diaz has a nice bank shot here on the eight. Yeah, which gives you shape on the four, really. I mean, it lays perfect to come down for the four. I'm sure Feeder's very disappointed with that, hitting it so heavy. Yeah, now the scratch is kind of on here with straight English. He's not hitting it hard enough. You got to shoot those a little more, Daz. You really got to go at those a little more. That ball will slide. Plus, you don't get that initial turn so bad off the yeah. first rail. Yeah. Well, that's the Jeremy Jones one pocket uh, experience coming through, and Daz is more the nine ball guy well it's easy even if you know daz plays darn good one pocket obviously he's in the final three but it's uh i have to remind myself of that too when i'm playing sometimes is jeremy quit lagging these balls you know you're a huge mm -hmm. favorite to make them or hang them if you shoot them a little bit right so yeah it's it's, it's an easy thing to get wrapped up in is that speed control now looking back do you think it would have been better for Federer to just play position f to make the straight back rather than try to go all the way down and get behind the eight? Or, well, I mean, once he got, of course. Yeah, once he got there, though, I liked his chances of making it, that's for sure. Oh, no, another kind of from nowhere sellout here on a ball, and this is going to get Federer to the, to the heel as far as the ball count. But, you know, the one thing is, you know, if he had to shoot it a bunch of times, I think he makes the four at such a high rate on the bank. I think he, he wins more often just settling for the bank myself. And that puts him on seven at that point. Yeah, and then yeah. he could just he probably draws back and gets a three railer regardless for his out ball, right? Yeah, he's gonna figure something out from there. Yeah. 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 He just banks the long railer so nice. I mean it's like be different if the ball was up another diamond where you had a little leeway to get yeah. in there. But th and I think was it was the two balls that made him go up there as well. He felt like he could fall behind one of them. Maybe, you know? yeah. Okay. All right. Hitting down on it. All right. He wants this to spread right before the second rail here, before the side. Spread up to the middle of the end rail for the cut. Yeah, right there. Exactly perfect. Middle of the end rail. I've got a bad feeling we're going to lose Dynamite Daz, Darren Appleton. But we're maybe seeing history here with an, uh, another final maybe for Fetter Gorst, and no one's ever won all three. In one year. In one year, that's <laughs> what I mean. Hey, the first three games went kind of quick. This last one's been a long game. Same thing here. Don't dead roll it too too soft. Go ahead and shoot it a little bit. That is match ball. Yes. It's down. Center, center cut. Maybe just a couple little unforced errors at the end of that uh, rack, but uh, otherwise it was it. Uh, really yeah. It seemed like Darren's mind was coming around like he was getting into the game than just a couple unfortunate things. Fun match to commentate. And once again, we want to thank everyone for joining us. This has been an AccuStats video production. So long for just a while.